Okay, so welcome to the lesson on direct proportion. Um, so before we move on, to, before we look at how to answer these kind of questions, we are going to have a quick chat about what direct proportion is. Okay, now two things are directly proportional if they can be linked by a constant. Now that, that sounds really complicated, I know, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you an example, okay. So we might say um, the money you earn in your job, okay, the money you earn in a job is directly proportional, I spelled it wrong, proportional, <laughs> proportional to the number of hours you work, okay, so the number of hours you work. So yeah, if you are working hard at work and you get, let's say, £5 an hour for your job, okay, the money you take home at the weekend and when you get paid is going to be directly proportional to how many hours you've done. And that means you get £5 for every single hour. It doesn't change. You don't get £5 for some hours, £6 for others, £2.50 for a different hour. They're all going to be £5. And that's direct proportion. So here we are. Here's a nice one. A really nice one to start off on. So, 10 cakes cost £10 altogether. So, how much is one cake? Now, I imagine you can actually see this straight away. If 10 cakes cost £10, then one cake costs £1. Okay, that's quite a nice one. That shouldn't be too, anything too horrible. And you probably can see that, and almost without knowing what it is you can see or why it works. Now, what we're going to look at today is something called the unitary method. Okay, I'm going to show you how it works with this example and then we're going to apply that method to some trickier ones. Okay, so we're going to practice it with this quite nice one and then we're going to apply it to some trickier ones. So, first of all, unitary, unit means one essentially. Okay, we're going to find out every time the method is to find out what one thing costs. Once we know what one costs, we can work out anything else. Okay. So if 10 cakes cost £10, I know you already know one cake costs £1 because they're directly proportional. So the way we've done that though is actually we've done £10 divided by 10 cakes. Okay, £10 divided by 10 cakes gives us £1 per cake. And that's the maths that you've done. Okay, that's the maths that you've done. Um, it's important you see that because you're going to need to be able to apply that on the next question because you're not going to be able to just see what one of them costs. You have to be able to work it out. So we've already answered part A, one pound per cake. And then we want to know what three cakes cost. Well, once we know that one, what one cake costs, we should be fine, okay? Three cakes cost one pound times three. That's one cake's cost and we want three of them. So it costs three pounds. Now, you won't always be prompted to find the cost of one, okay? That's the nice thing about the unitary method is that you need to know to do that, okay? You won't always be told. You might be just told straight away what the three cakes cost, and you've got to know. First thing I've got to do is find out what one costs, even if you've not been told to do it. Okay, then. So here, next question. We've got nine pens, and they cost, it costs £2.70 for nine pens. And I'm asking here what one pen cost, what six pens cost, and what eleven pens cost. Okay, so first of all, one pen. If it's two pounds seventy for nine pens, the calculation you need to do is two pounds seventy divided by nine. Okay, because we we want to see what one of them costs, so we're going to split it into nine equal parts. Okay, I'm happy you can use calculator for that. You get zero point thirty. Now, just watch out for your units here. We've got pounds here. So this is pounds. Now, it's not 30 pounds. It's 0 0.3 pounds. Okay, 0 0.30 pounds. So it's actually 30 pence. But just be really careful with your notation, not to muddle those up and get them mixed around. Okay, then. So that's one pen. And that's like the really important bit. As soon as we know what one pen costs, the rest of these you should be okay finding. B... We have to find six pens. To do that, we're going to take the price of one pen, which is 30 pence, and multiply it by six. 
okay which is 180 in this case but remember here because I've changed it to pence it's 180 pence which is one pound eighty okay so just again be careful with those units and the last one is to find out what 11 pens cost okay so we've got 11 pens for this one and we're going to have 30 pence because that's what one cost times 11 this time okay and to do that one in your head you could do 30 times 10 which is 300 and add on one more so it's 330 pence which equals three pounds and thirty okay, if we wanted to put it into pounds and that's how we do that one okay so again we're always looking for the price of one first and we get the price of one by doing the total cost divided by how many there are in the example okay you always give in an example like this you always give an example to help you find out the cost of one okay we've got one more here if eight rulers cost five pound twenty how much do nine rulers cost so this time we're not being prompted to find out one and this is when the questions get a bit more unpleasant because you're not it's not holding your hand through it okay but just remember unitary method okay that's what we're looking at here unitary method so we need to find out what one of them costs now if you can't remember what to do with these numbers which way do i multiply or which way do i divide or what do i have to do you probably know you've got to do something with them okay here's a little trick you might want to look at it this way 8 rulers equals 5 pounds 20 okay we've just seen that 8 rulers put your pound sign in if it helps 5 pounds 20 now my unitary method tells me I need to find out what 1 costs so I want to find out what 1 is okay how do I get from 8 to 1 don't say subtract 7 okay that's a thing here and it will trip us up a little bit until we get used to it with proportion we're always looking at multiplying and dividing okay so in this case we're dividing by 8 because 8 divided by 8 is 1 so you always find you're actually dividing by the number itself if that number had been 12 we would divide by 12 for example to get 1 so 8 divided by 8 is 1 and because there's an equal sign as soon as you see that equal sign you've got to think okay I have to do the same thing to both sides otherwise it won't work as soon as you see an equal sign that matters and we're going to do five pound twenty divided by eight and i am certainly going to get my calculator out although i think i'm going to say 45 pence but let's just check oh 65 pence okay 0.65 pounds okay or 65 pence i prefer to work in pence when it gets like this just because then you'd have to deal with the decimals okay a little bit nicer okay so what was the question then now we know what one costs 65 pence and write that again if you want just so it's really clear one equals 65p we want to know what nine costs so we're going to do 65p times nine or if you really like this method we'll just do the same thing again okay how do we get from one to nine and this is like our ruler's side we multiply by nine so we're going to do the same on this side multiplied by nine i know i certainly quite like this method i find it really sensible and it works for lots of different scenarios as well not just for proportion so 65 multiplied by nine is 585 please 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 promise me you won't go into an exam and write down that nine rulers cost 585 pounds okay don't forget your common sense with these we can convert it into pounds because that is the more sensible unit to use in that case okay always try and use the most sensible unit for what you're working with okay we, do, we wouldn't often buy something and say oh yes that costs 585p okay we would say pounds okay so that's the last example of those now that's direct proportion now next lesson that i put up is going to be on um, inverse proportion which works in very much the same way but it's the absolute opposite okay that sounds really confusing don't worry i'll explain it to you properly then take care